we are live now doctor okay uh, good evening respected seniors colleagues and all the wonderful and uh, dynamic residents who have logged in i am dr vishal agarwal scientific committee chairman ros and it gives me immense pleasure to wel welcome you all for yet another master class of the online post graduate teaching program kaksha the novel uh, pg teaching program envisioned by ros which will cover all the major topics over a period of next 2 years of the current curriculum of post graduate uh, of thermology in india we will be bringing you the best of national and state faculty experts to share the knowledge and interact with you the residents who are encouraged uh, or uh, who have joined in are encouraged to put forward their doubts in a in a fearless manner coming to this class we have today with us dr santosh anawar from hyderabad to teach us about making uh, effective presentations uh, and even uh, who has heard him speak about anything I will tell you he is the perfect orator and the right person to discuss the above topic personally i have been hearing him speak in various academic meetings right from my residency uh, days in rp center and not just me but an entire generation of young doctors have been inspired for more than two decades by him to muster the courage and go on the stage and speak he does not require any introduction but as is customary i will be giving a very brief intro uh, dr santosh anawar is trained at rp center in wills eye hospital philadelphia he established the ocular oncology unit at lb prasad eye institute in hyderabad he was the associate director of lbpi and established the residency program he currently heads the uh, oculoplasty oncology at center for sight and cfs education he has numerous awards just a small list here he was uh, awarded the uh, colonel rangachari award and i believe uh, he was one of the youngest recipient in the history of ai was to uh, receive uh, the accolade and he has also received peshawar ad award by ai us shanti swarup bhatnagar award by the government of india jerry shields award by the asia pacific academy of ophthalmology uh, he was the first indian to receive lifetime achievement award by the american academy in 2019 he has also received honorary fellowship of the royal uh, college of ophthalmologists uk in 2020 he has been uh, the former editor of indian journal of ophthalmology and uh, currently he is the honorary secretary of aius i welcome the ros president uh, kilani sir uh, and uh, the president elect uh, dr sanjeev desai sir and our dynamic secretary from jodhpur dr gulam ali sir uh, over to dr uh, santosh anawar sir you can share your screen now thank you vishal thanks for the kind invitation i congratulate you and ros for conceiving this wonderful program i'll share my screen i was asked to speak on a topic which is very difficult to speak about i really don't know whether i can do justice to this kind of a talk but really i'll try my best to see if i can make you a better presenter than what you already may be So I have titled it "Make the Magic." Make the magic with your presentations. So myth is that in generally in academic circles there is always a myth that knowledge speaks and content is the key, which may be true. It's actually partially true because knowledge is important when you make a presentation. but the reality is that presentation matters even if the science is indisputably great even if you know that you have extremely good content it is a way you that way that you put it across in your slides and talk about it makes the utmost impact now most important aspect about it is that it is like a mag storytelling is always like a magic you have to weave a story with your presentation and say it in a very few words you should not be too elaborate or descriptive about what you speak and cast a spell it's very important that your presentation should be able to make an impact and once you cast a spell you let the magic unfold a goal of a great presentation is to create emotions that that has has been that's what has been said about presentations and persuade the listeners to take action the shortest route from your mind to their action should be your presentation so the way you present or way you present a topic or speak on a disease 
should be the shortest route from what you know about it to what they would perceive and what they would practice ultimately. So whenever we talk about presentations, there are three stages. The first stage is to prepare the presentation in your own mind or conceptualize it. The second part is to design it. And the third part, of course, is to deliver. The beginning of the beginning is preparation. Story is said to be the skeleton. So unless you have a story or a theme to your presentation, it will fall apart. Skeleton is the one which will hold the muzzles together and of course the final dressing up that you do. And a good, good story is supposed to be very simple. Said that if you can't explain it simply, then probably you haven't understood it yourself. If you make a particular topic too complex, possibly there's a need for you to understand the concept yourself in such detail that you can make it extremely simple. Conventionally, there are 10 tips that are given. The first one is to turn off your laptop and start conceptualizing the story in your own mind. Computers or laptops will not give you the story. You have to start thinking about it in your own mind. And your mind is the one or the head is the one which gives you the story. The second is to know your audience. Your audience could be as basic as this. Two ends of the spectrum are very interested in what you speak. One are the beginners. The second ones are the most experienced. But you may, might be challenged with those who are more bothered about the selfies than the self, the middle ones, who really may not be interested in what you speak. And that's what you deal with when you speak to residents and fellows. These are the ones who may have totally different goals than yours and may be very challenging as, as an audience. Next one is to plan a solid structure. It's all about content. Story needs archi architectural structure, which is completely forgotten. Once you see the movie, that is what is said. So what is important is to have a structure that does not come through as something that is very visible, but at the same time, it will blend with what you finally say. So you have to have a very nice content. Now, whenever you plan a solid structure, for example, if you're speaking about a disease, the disease could be retinoblastoma, for example, or say ocular surface chromous neoplasia, you have to have a definition. Definition of the disease is important. Then you elaborate on the diagnostic criteria. Then you talk about imaging, possibly classification of the disease. Then you talk about treatment aspects, including surgery. You don't stop there. You talk about a bit of relevant pathology as well. Then again, you have to tell the audience as to how the patient would do with the treatment strategy that you have employed, the prognosis. And finally, you conclude. So this is the basic solid structure that you would have for a disease. Similarly, if you're not talking about a disease, if you're talking about a surgery, then what would be important are the indications for that surgery, contraindications for that surgery, surgical steps, relevant complications. How do you manage those complications? And finally, prognosis and conclusion. So you have to have that structure. Then you have to have a clear message or a theme. What is the message that you would want to give out of your presentation? Or in short, what is the thing that you want the audience to remember? Out of one hour of lecture, what exactly would your audience should remember? 10 points possibly, or even a single point that you want to drive home with your presentation is extremely important. So you should remove all the non-essential aspects from your presentation. It is said about a good story or a movie that if you say in the first chapter of a book that there is a rifle hanging on the wall, in the second or the third chapter, it absolutely must go off. If it's not going to be fired, it should not be hanging there at all. So in your presentation, you should not have irrelevant aspects which would not build towards your final story. Hook them on early, grab them and never let them go is one of the concepts. So you should always start with a bang, possibly a mind blowing case that you want to present or an interesting story to introduce the concept and build on it. So if you start with a case or a short anecdote, that will actually hook the audience. And once they get hooked, 
they might actually linger on and listen to more of you. Then you should demonstrate a clear change. A presentation does not, does not seek to make a change is a waste of time and energy. If the audience know about everything that, that you're going to speak already, then you're not contributing to their knowledge at all. They would get bored. So in your presentation, you should bring in aspects which your target audience, you already know who are your target audience, are unlikely to know. Maybe 10% of them would know something about what you're speaking, but at least a majority of them should not know about a few aspects that you're going to give in your talk. So it should be a mix of information, inspiration, and motivation. You should never expect to change from wakefulness to sleep, but vice versa. If the audience is bored in the beginning, at least in the middle of your lecture, they should start waking up and start getting interested in what you're going to speak. So always do something unexpected. You can suddenly ask an open question. If you're talking to an audience in a classroom, you can suddenly pop up a very interesting question or point to a certain group of people or a certain individual and ask him or her a question. Suddenly take an audience poll, ask them how would they manage a particular situation or a case. Show a very dreaded, exciting complication. And you can also show how do you salvage from a given up situation. If it's a desperate disease or a des desperate clinical situation, how you can possibly salvage with the management strategy that you're going to advocate. Finally, you have to make them feel. Time after time, when faced with the task of pursuing a group of managers to get enthusiastic about a major change, storytelling was the only thing that worked. That's what Stephen Denning says in his book, Leader's Guide to Storytelling. So it's all about storytelling. Finally, you have to make them feel and be interested in what you're going to talk about. Lastly, but not of least importance, is that you have to be authentic and humble. Honesty is the key. You should acknowledge resources if you have borrowed your material from various resources. Authenticity is built on honesty and a willingness to be vulnerable. Honesty is rare, but when audience see it, they appreciate it. The next aspect is about design. If story is the skeleton, visuals are the flesh and skin. So your presentation must be full of relevant visuals. Now, when you look at PowerPoint, I'm going to talk about PowerPoint presentation. In PowerPoint, there are built-in templates. You can use any of them. Some of these templates may be very complicated and may distract the audience from the theme of your presentation. In that situation, you can create your own design. It's possible in PowerPoint to create your own design and maintain that design through a series of your presentations so that you can finally pull up slides from one presentation or another and group them together without having to redesign entire presentations. Over a period of time, you may have four or five talks for example, on vascular occlusions of retina. And you might be able to pull out one slide or 10 slides from each of those presentations and make a different presentation. So consistency of design is very important. And when you create a design, you can give consistency to it. There are two slide formats. One is four by three, which I'm using today. 16 into nine is the most favored presentation format currently. You can use either of that, but depending on the screen size, 16 by nine may be more preferable currently. It's a more a wider canvas that you get. Then about the background. Now background ideally is a single color, mono color. It could be a dark background, darker the better. It could be a black background as I'm using now. It could be a dark blue background like this, or it could even be a background where there is one single color, which is of a darkish shade. Even a dark gray is perfectly all right. White background is also acceptable, but that is somewhat distracting, I feel personally. You should always add a design element, like this two that I have put, the number that I have put here is my design element. And I would carry it on consistently all through my presentation. Similarly, you can add a design element, which could simply be a line or a a uh, zone of color that is running across your presentations and different sections uh, so that there is some consistency in the design element. External templates are available currently. You can download external templates from the internet. 
And if you are a part of an organization or a university, there could be organizational templates which are mandatory for you to use. For the background, I would prefer a single color. Single color in the sense that if it is black, it should be uniformly black. There could be subtle variation in shade from one end of the slide to the other, but that can sometimes be distracting. I would actually prefer a single color and a solid color. Design element or highlight is okay, as I said, and keep it same across presentation. That is to show you the dark blue shade, and that is the white color, which is very elegant. But when you use white, it should not be too distracting. So the contrast colors that you use for an emphasis font, such as the heading or the bullets, should be very subtle. They should not be too garish. Now, logo should be at the bottom of the slide it should be ideally at the bottom right you can also use a top ended logo but that can sometimes be distracting now if you use a logo like this that could be distracting because that is in contrast with the background color where the background color is black here suddenly the background of the logo is white so you can do away with it by using this kind of png image or portable graphics format image which could be created from any image uh, from any image modifying software. So when I use this, it is distracting, but when I change the image format to PNG, I could blend the background with the background of the slide or like this. If I were to use a white background, I would use a PNG image and blend the background of the image, logo image with the background of the slide. So this is more pleasing. Always use good fonts. These are some of the considerations about the fonts, which I'll elaborate on. Serif is a line, which is a decorative line, which is often used at the end of the font. There's a class of fonts, which are called serif fonts, where this kind of a line is used at the end of the font. These are called serif fonts. There's a family of fonts, which are serif fonts. Sans or without serif are the fonts which don't use any line at the end or a decorative line at the end. They simply end like this. So these are a family of fonts called sans serif fonts. When you look at these two fonts, you find that sans serif fonts is more clear, more impactful, whereas a serif font would make the slide appear busy. So now let's see which are the serif fonts and which are the not sans serif fonts. Times Roman, which is the common font for a newspaper or a magazine, is a serif font. Georgia and Rockwell are other serif fonts as well. Whereas Arial font is a rounded font or a Verdana or a trebuchet fonts are sans serif. You can see that again in this slide that serif fonts make the slide look a little busy. It's okay to use serif fonts, but I would personally prefer sans serif fonts and many of the presenters prefer sans serif fonts, which look more pleasant and well-rounded. We should not use multiple fonts. A slide like this would look very amateurish. These are not good for professional presentations. If at all you want to change the font type, then you can use it for emphasis. For example, heading can be in a different font and the body of the slide can be in a different font or a particular bullet point can be changed in terms of font only for emphasis, but don't make it a habit to use different fonts in the same slide. These are the four fonts that I have talked about. Arial, Verdana, Tahoma, and Helvetica. These are all sans serif fonts. All of them look uniformly present. Arial is a very common font that is used. Helvetica is also a common font that is used. These look very elegant. Tahoma is little clustered. Verdana is a nice font. So you can choose your font and make it consistent. Now, what about the font size? These are various font sizes that we have. Some use font size 24 and expect the audience to read. If the audience uh, is uh, the back of the hall and the room is kind of narrow and the screen size is not so large, then it, it is very difficult for the audience to read. Initially, they will try and then finally they get tired and give up. They don't concentrate on your slides anymore. So all the material that you have on the slide will be wasted if you have a font that is not clear. 60 may be too big because it is too large. So it will become very jarring. Big is beautiful, but what is important is to practice this two meter rule. 
that means if you are using a 14 inch laptop and your powerpoint slide is made full screen in the presentation mode if you sit at a distance of 2 meter then your font should be readable this is applicable to a standard laptop about 14 or 15 inch screen with the powerpoint slide in full screen you should be at a distance of 2 meter from the laptop and your font size should be visible and that is the ideal size of the font so when you apply that tool 2 millimeter rule ideal font size is about 36 to 48 of which you can use 48 for the title and 36 for the body of the slide don't use 60 don't use 24 or 18 or 12. now what is the disparity that you should maintain between the headline and the content there should be a disparity there should be a change in color between the headline and the body of the slide but the disparity should not be too big if the disparity is as big as i have shown in this slide then the concentration of the audience will go towards the headline more, most more importantly than towards the body of the slide but at the same time it should not be small the title should be slightly larger than the content it should not be smaller than the content so never have a large title and a small body never have a smaller title and a large body you should have a balance then what are the font emphasis font emphasis are non natural fonts that you use such as italic fonts italics are difficult to read so you don't use them regularly in a slide underlines are to be used only for hyperlinks you should not use them consistently generally use normal fonts and use bold for emphasis make a particular word bold or a particular bullet point bold for emphasis or use a different color for emphasis so don't use italics and hyperlinks or underline text for emphasis rather use bold and color now spacing of the font is also important this is wide spacing the same font that i have used but i have spaced it so wide it is distracting narrow is difficult to read so you have to maintain the natural spacing and also double spacing is distracting so this particular bullet point is typed in double space and it is distracting and it is disjointed it takes away from the flow that your bullet points are making so always use fonts with one and a half or one spacing and don't use too widely spaced or narrow text now some use capitals as a routine i feel that capitals are rude and jarring and are difficult to read you ideally should use sentence case this is a sentence case where the first word starts with a capital letter and the flow is that the other words are starting with the small letter that is a sentence case title case is one where each relevant word starts with a capital letter except for some words such as is for the important words start with capital letter so that is a title case so now title case is generally best for the heading of the slide whereas sentence case is best for the bullet points colors are very nice so i would use two maximum three colors in a particular slide ideally two colors the title should be of a different color yellow or on black is a very nice striking color or also you can use black blue red or white or orange on white background the body white on black is a very good color or black on white is a good color as well now there is always a debate about should we use contrast colors or complementary colors these are a series of colors that i've used on a black background you can appreciate that on a black background what stands best is white absolutely prominent yellow is also very good orange looks reasonably good but what doesn't stand bold is green brown blue red and gray so you should not use these colors if you are using a black background rather stick to white yellow and maybe orange when you look at a white background you can see that what stands out really nicely is gray blue is also good green looks very nice red is slightly jarring so you can use black gray blue or green on a white background 
black is absolutely elegant on a white background if you really are confused about what are the complementary colors and what are the contrasting colors you can use the color wheel here you can see that for red the complementary color is green but in a slight situation they may not always work well but surprisingly purple and yellow work very well you can try this color combination sometime and it works beautifully well orange and blue also works reasonably well so you can try some of these combination combinations and realize for yourself what looks better now on a green background if you're using a green background purple looks very bad red is jarring blue is almost invisible brown also looks bad but what looks good on green would be yellow and white and maybe orange so what looks best according to scientific understanding of colors is black on yellow white on black on white black on orange blue on white green on white and red on white these are some of the best colors and if your background is black then you can use yellow font white font orange font if your background is blue white looks very good if your background is green white looks very good and if your background is red then white looks very good these are some of the fair combination and these are absolutely poor combinations so colors are nice but contrast is your friend so you should always use a contrasting color then try to use complementary colors to offer now about the bullets bullets are used to show priority sequence and hierarchy you should not have very fancy bullets i would use either a round or a square bullet which is the same color as the heading so for example if heading is yellow i would use a yellow bullet all through my presentation i could also use a square bullet or a round bullet that is personal choice 100% of the font size i would never use a smaller bullet than the font size and you also have a slight amount of offset about 4 to 5 mm of offset so there should be a distance between the bullet and the text it should not be too much it should not be too close but if you are using a sequence or if your slide shows a sequence for example this slide shows the sequence of surgical steps in excision of ocular surface squamous neoplasia the first step is excision with tumor free margins the second step would be alcohol assisted keratoepithelectomy third step would be cryotherapy to the resection edge and so on so when you are using or depicting a sequence then you can use numbers as bullets otherwise you can simply use bullets without any numbers right next font finally to summarize about the font keep it simple sans serif is the best same font family all through your presentation and definitely the same font family in your slide Sli style should be consistent and should be maintained you can use a different font for emphasis you can use a different font for the title but don't keep on changing the fonts and don't use more than two font families on the same slide color should be more governed by contrast rather than complementary colors the slide uh, should have fonts of adequate size we already mentioned that 24 to 36 is an ideal size font for the body of the slide 36 is ideal for the title bold and color should be used only for emphasis don't use underline or italics now how much text is text is too much this is a 6 by 6 rule that means that you can ideally use 6 words per line and six lines in a font size of about 24 on powerpoint anything less than six it is said scientifically you see the slide if it's more than six you start counting so it can be tiring so you should use six lines maximum and maximum of six words per line more than six it is also studied and proven that more than six lines or more than six words in a line take about 500% more cognitive power and effort so your audience may get bored or tired at the end of your presentation it may incur what is called death by powerpoint so don't use too many words or too many lines in your presentation so maintaining the level fairly uniform is very important what do i mean by maintaining the level now you can see in this slide 
that the title is at a particular level, there's a particular amount of distance between the title and the body of the text, and the text is at a particular level. Let me go to the next slide. See this? This is called jumping. Now in the next slide, my title has moved down. Although I have maintained the same distance, my body of the text has also moved down. So when I move from this to this, there's a shift or a jump that can become tiring. Whereas from here to here, it is the same. Whereas from here to here, there's a jump. So you try to avoid an abrupt jump and maintain the title of the slide exactly at the same position all through your presentation, begin the body of the text exactly at the same position all through your presentation, depending on the lines that you have in the body of the slide, it can end anywhere, but beginning should be the same because people generally concentrate on the top. Like this, again, you can see title is the same, right? Body of the slide may end at a different level, depending on the number of the slide. Now we talked about text arrangement, flowing text, bullet points, and text as graphics is very important consideration as well. Flowing text is a big no. You should never copy paragraphs and paste it on a slide and expect the audience to read. Nobody is going to read and you're going to read it yourself, which will not look very good for a presentation. You should use very few words and talk more. Less words and more of talking will make your presentation very impactful. So flowing text is a big no. So it always said that text is evil. So you should use lesser text and that is better. Example is this picture. I'm talking about ocular surface cremous neoplasia. I don't have a paragraph here. All I have used are four lines of text, each with one to two words. I'm going to say that ocular surface cremous neoplasia is most common ocular surface malignancy. It has a clinical spectrum ranging from dysplasia, mild, moderate, severe, to carcinoma in situ, to invasive squamous cell carcinoma. That's what I'm going to say, or I may, I may even say more about it. But what is striking here is the picture, which is showing the tumor. And most important part of the text that you're going to emphasize on, but not too much of text to make it too theoretical. So limit the words on your slides and let the picture speak. Don't make people read too much. They get tired or bored. It's also said that images say more than a thousand words. Like this patient, like uh, again, a picture of ocular surface cremous neoplasia. I can have this much of text, which is okay. But there is so much to read. But if I want to emphasize with this slide, that keratin is the most important diagnostic feature of ocular surface cremous neoplasia. I may simply put it across like this, keratin 70%. It means that 70% of patients with OSSN will have keratin and that's how it makes it an important diagnostic criteria. So instead of so much of text, I can simply put it as keratin 70%. So here what is speaking is the picture which is showing keratin very vividly and what is supporting it, like the background music for a movie, is this text of 70%. Text is not screaming here. Picture is screaming out loud and text is only supporting the picture. When you place a picture, you have to crop it nicely. And this is the rule of thirds. So if you divide a picture into nine sectors using this grid, the center, the center most rectangle or a square should have the area of focus. So if you're focusing on this, say this is double circulation on FFA in a choroidal melanoma, I have cropped it and placed it right in the center. If I place it somewhere there, audience will not be interested in it. So basically the eye catches what is in the center like this. There's a volcano. The center is right there in the middle of in the middle grid. So that is very eye-catching. So to always place the focus of interest of the picture right in the middle grid. And when you talk about, when you show pictures, it's always a good idea to show before and after pictures because that makes a great impact. Here, I, I want to draw attention to say the effect of intravenous methylprednisolone and immunomodulation on reduction in muscle thickness in 
hyoiditis. So what I have done here, I don't have too much text here. I have simply shown a CT scan of the inferior rectus muscle before treatment and after treatment. So what is striking is the reduction in size of the muscle, isn't it? So I don't have to talk much about it. Audience themselves will understand that this is a very effective form of treatment. I don't have to really shout about it. Again here, ocular surface cremous neoplasia. I have treated this patient with plaque brachytherapy. The impact is so striking that the audience will realize for themselves that plaque brachytherapy is a very good treatment modality for ocular surface cremous neoplasia with scleral invasion. I really don't have to shout force about it. So it's a very striking picture. So similarly, whenever you show pictures, size implies importance. So if I want to show a patient with diffuse OSS in, instead of showing such a small picture, I would make the picture speak loud and clear by showing a large picture with very minimal font. And if I really want to draw the attention of the audience to a particular part of the slide, I would use a arrow in a contrast color. Then the next thing is about infographics. Infographics are the graphs that you use in a slide. If you use them, make them very attractive. And again, for emphasis, you can change a color of a particular font to draw emphasis on what the draft is speaking about. And the schematics are very effective when you want to talk about a treatment strategy. For example, here I have talked about management of active thyroid disease, mild, moderate to severe, and severe. And for each clinical situation, there is a flow chart. So schematics are very important in making the audience understand your thought process for the management of a particular disease. So graphics and art should be relevant, simple, and not distracting. Now, this was a transition. So I'll go back to it. See this? Is that not distracting. I feel transitions and animations sometimes can be distracting, especially if you're presenting in a competition. And if you have, say, six minutes to present a paper, using too many animations can actually kill a lot of time. It may get stuck sometimes, depending on the speed of the CPU that is used in the laptop that is given at the podium. So transitions and animations, you try to avoid or minimize as much as possible. Include only those, if you feel, are very, very necessary, then only include transitions and animations. Otherwise, try to avoid. Appear and disappear is the best. Like this change, see this? It appears and disappears. So it's a straightforward change in transition, and there is no animation that I've used. Now, always be consistent all through your presentation. Use differences only to draw attention. Use differences in font, color, contrast, size only to imply importance. Use surprises to attract and not distract. For example, if I change the bullet here, that is to emphasize that this particular text is different from the rest of the text. So I want to draw attention of the audience to this particular part of the slide. So I've changed the bullet here and not for fun. Use differences to imply importance, use surprises to attract, not distract. For example, I have used a difference here, difference in color and the boldness of the font to imply that this word is important. Use surprises to attract, not distract. This change in color, three colors I have used in the same line, it's to surprise you so that your attention is drawn towards this line and not to distract you. I should not randomly use these change in color or contrast and boldness, not to distract, but only to surprise the audience so that they become attentive to what you're talking at that particular point in time. So text to support communication, graphics to simplify concepts, pictures to show and teach, videos to do and show, and whenever you embed a video, it should be concise. You should not be forwarding or stopping the video in the middle of your presentation without knowing where to go. It should not be too random. You should be very crisp in your video and it should be pre-edited and it should start exactly in the sequence that you want to show to the audience. Don't stand there and start forwarding the video. Animations and flowcharts 
are to be used only to break down complex concepts. Visuals are to attract and not to distract. Big, clear, and simple is what we are talking about. And finally, your presentation should make the learning actionable. It should give the audience a learning point or maybe a take home trick. If you're talking about management of a posterior capsular rent, you should give them a take home trick which they may not be aware of at the time that they're listening to you so that they go they can go back and practice in their own theaters if they ever have such a complication it should have immediate practical implication that means that if i'm talking to an audience of say who are doing oculoplasty and if i'm talking about a new drug say teptotumumab which has suddenly become available in our country and it can be used for dramatic reduction in activity of thyroid disease it is going to make an immediate practical implication to the audience that I'm talking to. So use such information in your presentation, which is going to be useful to your audience, which they'll thank you for. It should also stimulus and provide a stimulus to improve knowledge and skills. So you do not leave them bored. For example, if you're talking about a new surgical procedure that you're following of late, and if you show a video clip of that, it will stimulate your audience possibly to start practicing it or try to incorporate it in their practices. And at least you should use your presentation to let the audience know their limitations. Now, the goal of the presentation is to catch the attention of the audience and also to wow them, of course. But what is important is to be very simple in your presentation. Simplicity is the utmost sophistication. So your presentation Design has to be very simple and the content should be quite intense. Coming to delivery of your presentation, if story is the skeleton, visuals are the flesh and skin, that is the designing of the presentation, delivery is the soul of a presentation. So ideal aspects of delivery are that the people should be focused on you because you are the face of your presentation. You are carrying the presentation on your shoulder so you should be in focus of course the slides are are to be in focus it's important but the presenter also should be in focus you should give very clear learning objectives in the beginning of the presentation the audience should know what will they learn at the end of the half an hour presentation that you're going to give them if they don't know or not are not sure about what they're going to learn then they may be defocused these are supposed to be smart goals of a presentation in the sense that what are the deliverables of the presentation? So your goals that you're going to offer to an audience should be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant to them, and it should be time bound. These are the smart goals of a presentation that you're going to give out at the beginning of the presentation itself. You, you should realize that your slides are not the point and you're the point. So you should be very confident when you talk to an audience you should be comfortable and you should be considerate about the knowledge that they want to gain from you at the end of the presentation. This is not the confidence that you would want to show off in front of the audience. You should not be threateningly confident. It is okay to be vulnerable. You can be naturally vulnerable because vulnerability creates a zone of comfort between you and the audience and gives you some kind of credibility because you are one of them. This is overconfident kind of an, almost a threatening kind of an attitude which a presenter ideally should not have. Presenters are okay with a little bit of vulnerability, but they should be very comfortable speaking to the audience. And comfort comes from practicing. It's okay if you have to practice four or five times before you deliver a presentation, but you should be very comfortable when you finally present. At the end of your presentation, for example, I may know a lot of, for, about retinoblastoma. I may tell you real deep information about retinoblastoma. So it is like taking somebody to the bottom of the ocean and leaving them gasping there. I should not end my presentation with deep knowledge about retinoblastoma, but I should actually bring the audience back into the surface, to the surface of the sea. And actually they can feel happy at the end of the presentation that, okay, they have gained some knowledge, but what is important for them to learn has been learned. 
so it is important to give them knowledge at the same at the same time you should always make them comfortable with the amount of knowledge that they are likely to gain at the end of your presentation never eat up time if you are been given a chance to make a presentation for say half an hour or 45 minutes you should not end up using about 1 1 and a half hours and eating up audience interaction time or other presenters time never eat up time stick to time and leave enough time for discussion and never overlap on other presenters time and that is considered true so always finally you should sum up like i'm doing now ideal presentation should have one idea per slide don't be too fleeting for the images remember the 6 by 6 9 by 9 grid where the center of the image should be the center of focus and for the slide remember the 6 by 6 rule where you should not use more than 6 lines and more than 6 words in each slide use a dark background contrast is your friend size matters a lot font size 24 to 36 are ideal 36 for the title and 24 for the body of the text number of slide really does not matter now for this presentation i had over 130 slides but what is important is what material you have in the slide it's better to have little material in each slide and have more slides that is perfectly okay because each slide will make a separate impact on the audience than have too much material which will go very diffuse so lot of slides would be good big images are good few words are absolutely good so good is everywhere you see lot of good presenters everybody presents well everybody presents with a particular amount of quality but magic is rare and your presentation should ideally aim to create that magic that you want the audience to get wowed with thank you so much thank you sir sir i have a couple of questions on behalf of the you know young speakers here so you know uh, everybody initially does not uh, have the habit to speak extempore or gather their thoughts uh, on the stage and there is a certain amount of stage fright also so you recommend you know writing on notes and speaking the other extra things apart from the presentation or use the presenter notes your presenter notes would be good as long as it does not get accidentally projected onto the screen if you don't know how to use presenter notes sometimes it can get projected onto the screen yes presenter notes are very good but when you use presenter presenter notes you will not be having eye contact with the audience you'll be looking at the screen and you'll be looking for the presenter notes so it's always uh, ideal to have some kind of eye contact at least with some part of the audience if you are a nervous presenter find somebody in the audience who is a friend or whose face would make you feel comfortable and focus on them and talk to them so ultimately over a period of time you would learn to be comfortable but if you use presenter notes then you may not be able to make eye contact yes of course it's a good idea though that if you are worried about being extempore or speaking with fewer words on the slide then well that some kind of a compromise situation where you can have presenter notes and refer to presenter notes often not consistently read it and you know have some eye contact as well so it's a good idea and the second thing is that we always do not have the luxury of speaking uh, uh, you know in, in a stretch of 15 20 minutes routinely the time allotted to every speaker especially the young speakers is 6 minutes or 8 minutes max and the topic is given you know a vast topic and right. then you you know have to huddle all the information in in maybe 30 or 35 slide and then that you know creates a tendency to rush up and yeah. then you know it's actually uh, the the message is not delivered very clearly to the audience yes. so what to do in that case so in that situation only concentrate on important points like what message you want to give to the audience for example if the topic is branch retinal vein occlusion then you have to decide at the beginning of the presentation itself that this is the message that key messages that i want to give to the audience don't talk too much about epidemiology which may not be of relevance at all you possibly should concentrate on what is important in the topic that needs to be delivered to the audience so your uh, goal would be cut short appropriately so your presentation length would be reduced to possibly one fourth of what you had otherwise aimed or what a textbook would write 
because you would be very practically oriented so if you're talking to your own colleagues for example if a resident is talking to another set of residents where the idea is to write answers for a theory question then 6 minutes is too inadequate then possibly you should have a talk for about half an hour or 45 minutes but if your goal is to examine a short case if i'm talking to a audience of residents on how to examine a short case of thyroid disease then i would concentrate on just the clinical aspects look for the activity of the disease look for functional impairment this is what you need to look for and i would end my talk there because i have no relevance to speak to them about management in detail so you should know about the audience and focus on what you want to deliver to them rather than uh, deliver uniform theory to everybody excellent point sir sir how to practice uh, presentation before going to the dais yeah how to practice presentation you can now with zoom being available you can simply log on to zoom record your presentation with your face on the screen and play it back again if you do once or twice of this this practice i think it's very 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 useful you know exactly how your face looks when you speak how contorted it may be so you can possibly if your head is like this tilted you will know how to hold it straight right if you are off centered on the screen you would know how to center yourself on the screen if you're not looking at the audience you know how to look at the audience and speak if you're looking like this on the keyboard or the bottom of the screen you'll suddenly realize that you should start looking up so record yourself when you present and listen to your own recordings multiple number of times if you do that two or three times you can see that there is a tremendous improvement that you have your own presentation skills these are your own skills but since you cannot see yourself when you're presenting in front of an audience that becomes a hindrance you're only only your friends will see how you are presenting unless somebody shoots a video and puts it on youtube you'll never see how you look or how you speak when you present so i think practice really makes you perfect and when you talk and record and then listen to it again you sometimes feel that you're too fast now if i go back to my own presentation on youtube and i listen to it i may feel that some parts i could have emphasized more some parts maybe i was too elaborate in some parts maybe i just skim through the topic and did not give enough time to the audience to understand it so when i make this presentation the next time i would consciously realize that these are my limitations of this presentation and try to to improve on it so there is no stage that is immune to learning and every stage you learn more about your own presentation and we become become better if you listen to your own presentations thank you sir Okay, so this has been a wonderful kaksha by Santosh sir. What's your last, last question? Uh, nowadays, uh, lot Achha, of okay, AI, AI tools are available to make a PPT. What is your take or what is your? That on? is, of course, AI uh, is like a crutch to a disabled person. I don't think AI should be used, at least, you know, for routine presentations. If you want to give a particular. edge you know edge of style to a particular presentation or if you want to generate images which you can't easily find you can use ai but i am against using ai for writing professional articles or uh, making presentations thank you sir yeah. does any of the audience want to ask any questions any comments or like to know more from them we still have stage fright i think seems <laughs> <laughs> Zoom fright. Zoom fright. Okay. So it's a vast topic, sir, and it's impossible to cover everything. But it was very well explained thank and you. very comprehensive presentation indeed. Thank you so much. I would uh, thank all the residents and the executive and the teachers and especially Sandor sir for the excellent uh, teaching. We look forward to the next class in the coming weeks. Thank you and keep giving your feedback and suggestions for the Kaksha experience to improve. and uh, do subscribe to the ros online uh, youtube channel all previous lectures including this are uploaded there and good night from team ros thank you so much sir thank you thank you sir thank you very much sir now baru na